the City of North Miami, its Council, and of course, Mayor Philippe Bien Ame for their support on this project. So um, I'm going to introduce Carl and Leonard because I'm really excited to dive right into this conversation and let them let them go. So uh, Carl Juice, for those of you that don't know, has been a photographic journalist for the Miami Herald since 1991. Juice was born into a politically active family in Haiti. After being forced to leave their homeland in 1965 for political reasons, they eventually settled in Miami, Miami's Haitian community. In addition to photographing for the Miami Herald, Juice founded Iris Photo Collective, uh, IPC. IPC's members are photojournalists of color who document people of color's relationship to the world. In 2019, Juice opened the IPC art space in Little Haiti. He is currently producing a book and exhibit titled Havana, Haiti, Two Cultures, One Community, consisting of photographs and texts that explore the bonds between Cuba and Haiti. Leonard Pitts Jr. was born and raised in Southern California. He was awarded a degree in English from the University of Southern California at the age of 19, having entered school at 15 on special honors. Since 1995, he and his wife have lived in Bowie, Maryland, in a suburb of Washington, D.C. Pitt's work has made him an in-demand lecturer. He maintains a rigorous speaking schedule that has taken him to colleges, civic groups, and professional associations all over the country. He has also taught at a number of institutions of higher learning, including Hampton University, Ohio University, the University of Maryland, and Virginia Commonwealth University. In the fall of 2011, he was a visiting professor at Princeton teaching a course in writing about race. He is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and we're so happy to have Leonard Pitts Jr. join us. At this moment, I'm going to let you guys take the floor. Um, I wanna start by asking you about uh, how this project came about. It's so reminiscent of, of uh, so many civil rights photographs that we've seen in the past. So I'm curious how this project, which took place in 2008, came about, and um, we'd love to hear the details about it. I, go on. Leonard, you, you make me look whoever like wants to, Whoever wants to start can take it. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard makes me feel like a slacker here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Leonard. That's really- I got more miles to feed than you do, bro. So. <laughs> All, right. All right, Leonard and I, we, We've been, uh, I'll speak for myself and, and you could chime in Leonard. I've been working for the Herald over 30 years and, and that has been my second family. That is where I've learned and, and toned my, and kind of tuned my craft. That is where I have been able to fail more than succeed. But the Herald's always been patient with me because they saw something bigger than just a person doing a job is so a voice and they cultivated that voice and and um and everything that i bring in my work um i bring it in the spirit of the ideals which the herald and, I, and myself hold which is the free press a clear voice and a sense of justice so I met Leonard, I used to stroll back to the features department back in the day when Leonard was a, a uh, music critic. I would, mm -hmm. I would go back and you know, we'll get into these. I'll say hi, you know, Leonard was like, you know, had that Jesus light behind him, you know? I'm gonna embarrass him a lot tonight because he doesn't <laughs> have no Okay, thank you and good night, everybody. <laughs> how well he's revered. And mm -hmm. I was one of the few black, black young cubs in the newsroom and to see someone that looked like me, that reached out to me and that spoke to things that are dear to me, that was very comforting. He was one of many. So Leonard, why don't you pick up from there? So I would. Well, specifically on the, on the project itself, and I forget, I don't know if it's Carl had the idea or I had the, I don't, I don't know where the idea actually came from, but together we were sitting down saying that we were about to approach the, um, 40th anniversary of the uh, murder of Dr. King. And, you know, somebody needs to say something. 
you know, I'm, I'm big on anniversary stories, anniversary columns, period. I've just, you know, that's the way I'm wired. I'm, I'm, I'm interested and fascinated by history. And this was a big thing that was coming up. And so we wanted to do a big thing. And initially the project that we had in mind was, was even bigger than what we have uh, here. Uh, we had this idea that, you know, the, the, the theme of the uh, 1968 sanitation worker strike that cost Dr. King his life uh, came to be I Am a Man. Uh, which obviously is the title of, of the installation here. Uh, and that came about because sanitation workers uh, were tired of being treated like they weren't men, like they weren't uh, adults, and in some cases, like they weren't even human beings. And what Carl and I thought was that this would be an excellent uh, opportunity to explore not just the sanitation worker strike, but what it meant to be a black man uh, in that year, 2008, uh, 40 years after the um, after the, uh, the the sanitation worker strike, 40 years after the murder of Dr. King, and in the same season that a black man named Barack Obama was running for president. So we had this idea that the Herald would give us money and let us travel all over the country interviewing black men to talk about various aspects of, of, of black manhood. I really wanted to talk to Shaquille O'Neal and some other men of his, of his stature because I had this idea for uh, one segment of the piece talking about what it's like to be a big black man you know, in, in America today. And so we, we presented this idea, you know, with all these different places we were going to go and people we were going to interview to the, to the higher ups. And they reminded us there's this little, um, there's this little uh, thing called a budget. And that uh, the idea that we had was, <laughs> you know, once upon a time, you, you, you did that kind of stuff. But, you know, even by 2008, this, this idea of a thing called budget was really sort of creeping in. And uh, they said no. So uh, and what, what, it, what it had been intended as two weeks traveling all over the country became basically, I think, three days in Memphis. Right. Uh, since obviously Memphis is the center of the story and we concentrated and focused it specifically on the, uh, the sanitation worker strike. And we went there and we were able to, uh, to find um, a number of the men still living uh, and, uh, and still working, which is the part that just broke my heart. Still, and I'm talking about not working like I do at a keyboard typing. Or like Carl with a you know lifting a camera. I'm talking about lifting big heavy loads, you know, and 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 running a garbage truck. Uh, but we were able to find the men and talk to them, and uh, you know, it was really a compelling and in some ways a very sad uh, and sobering story that emerged because uh, you know and I don't want to get too far ahead, but you know, 1968. Uh, these men, uh, you know, Dr. King was killed and the settlement that these men got, they got a settlement, they got some of what they wanted on paper, but materially it didn't, you know, didn't add to much improvement of their lives. If you're still working at 76 years old because you can't afford not to work, something's still wrong. That's right. Why don't yeah. we um, kick up that video and um, to kind of give it, the audience some context of what we're talking about. Yeah. Can you kick yeah. that up for us? Is that uh, Alex? Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Great. Our day was awful every day. We had these tubs that we had to put this garbage in. You put that tub on your head or your shoulder, whichever was comfortable for you to bring it out. Most of those tubs had holes on them that garbage would leak all over you. By the time you got home in the evening, uh, you had to pull out those old dirty clothes where maggots had fell all on you. I had maggots run down in my shirt and then maggots would go down in my shoes. And we worked in the rain, snow, ice, and rain. We had to. If we didn't, we'd lose our job. They said garbage man was nothing. It was awful. And one of the main things that really set us all real good was that two of the workers got crushed in a compactor. They got in that compactor to get out of the rain. One rainy day, and they got in that compactor, and they stripped some kind of lever that crushed them to death. It was rough. We see some, we see some terrible things here. Sometimes you cry, sometimes you get mad, and get up in the morning, and I say, I ain't going to work, and then see my kids, and I look at them, and then I say, then I had to go to work, because that's the only way I could feed my family. All we wanted was some decency, some dignity. We, we wanted to be treated as men. So we said that this is it, 1,300 sanitation workers. We all decided that we wasn't gonna take no more. Uh, you know, if you bend your back, people will ride your back. 
But if you stand up straight, people can't ride you back. So that's what we did. We just stood up straight and said, I am a man. Oh, and don't you let nobody turn you around. Can I just say, um, you know, while while Carl is is shoveling all this this praise in my direction, I need to shovel some back because the images that you just saw uh, in that in in that uh, video, the, the, you know, it, it looks almost like a kind of magic, like it just happens. But those images, uh, and I was there for 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 for, the, for capturing some of them. Those images come about, you know, because of an because of an artist with an eye. Who, who, who feels that there's a story here to be told. The one image of the gentleman, I forget his name, standing in the, um, at the, uh, the garbage, uh, the sanitation center, the garbage dump, with the, with the sign, the I am a man sign. I joke with Carl sometimes, because I, I, you know, I felt like I nearly died getting that picture, because he had me, he looped me in as his, uh, as his assistant. I don't remember volunteering for it, but suddenly I was doing it. <laughs> one of the coldest days, I'm sure, it was one of the coldest days that Memphis had seen in a minute. I'm underdressed out there, six o'clock in the morning, because we got to be there before the men go on their shift. You know, and Carl's got me moving the light this way and move the light. And I'm like, dude, you've taken a hundred, literally, you've taken a hundred pictures. One of those has to work. No, no, let's try it this way. Let's <laughs> Can you do this? Photographers will make you do all kinds of stuff. And 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 at the in the moment that you're doing it, you're like, this dude is crazy. You know, but then when you see the result. You know, when you see the result, you're always reminded that there's a method to you know, a method to the madness. So, you know, I, I salute my, my my colleague, my friend there, because that that's those are some some hellified images. Well, you know, okay, see, see, he's tripping because <laughs> you're tripping, you're tripping because let me tell you why. Uh, I know I had I had I was oh, kind oh, of great. Hold on, let me finish my statement. No, let me read something to you, okay. Let me, let me show you what does journalism and art have in common? Anybody? I'll tell you. It has the ability to touch, mm. move, and to, and to create the imaginable into a tangible item, either in the heart or in the mind. Yeah. Let me read this to you. I am a man. If you met me, you would regard it as self-evident truth. But there was a time it would not have been. See, I am a black man. And for the most of the years of America's existence, the terms were regarded by many as mutually exclusive. You could, you could be black or you could be a man, but you could not be both. Those are the words of Leonard Pitts. Uh, okay, we're gonna we're gonna end the mutual we're gonna end the mutual admiration society here. No more. And, 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 and I say this because uh. he's able to capture that through the images. I mean, he's a, an amazing collaborator. So we were trying to keep up with each other, I guess. Bottom line. Yeah, and the first time I asked Leonard, I, I always call him up. I say, Leonard, I'm working on this book. And I got these two pictures. Can you write a piece for me? Says Carl, you know, yeah. say sure. Send it. Send me the pictures, right? So I send these two pictures. <laughs> Let it. So if you correct me if I'm wrong, I send these two pictures, and then he sends me this, this prose. I'm telling you, that's so amazing. I I, I showed it to um, Lisette Mar um, Mendez, who's a project manager, and we both kind of looked at each other. And we say, oh boy, this project is going to be off the chain. <laughs> now, once he asked me, what, what am I going to get? But you did got two prints, right? Yeah, I got two prints. W would you ask us another question, please? So we just don't, right. don't sit there. You know, but no, you're the best. No, you're the best. <laughs> I'm just grateful. Well, well I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to, um, First of all, the what I really I really love this the video and I see mm -hmm. that it's StoryCorps, that it's a StoryCorps project. 
So how did how did StoryCorps get involved? I thought this was a project that started out for the Herald. Yeah, I have the video. I have everything the StoryCorps recorded. I think we we our our project came before that that recording. Okay, and I had the vi I had everything practically what 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 they said, but I couldn't find my original sound because after we moved from one Herald Plaza to Doral, a lot of the stuff got lost in the shift. But I knew that someone had to record it. And I remember hearing on StoryCorps. So I went back to StoryCorps and found the bits that I covered, the questions that I asked, and it just matched up. I mean, verbatim, almost verbatim. Yeah. So, yeah. so I needed that sound because I wanted you to hear it in their own voice, that, that tremble, that, 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 that anger, that sense of, of resilience. And I couldn't convey it solely on pictures. When you hear them talk in their own voice, yeah. it's just, it's just, it's moving. I remember, remember when we, when we were photographing, when the gentleman he broke down into tears. Joe Hudson, and Joe. it was the same thing. Uh, there, there's some things that you just can't convey, I guess, with pictures or words, because he started crying, and I felt basically everything, you know, every emotion. And in the piece that I wrote, uh, I, I remember I went through a bunch of different passages trying to describe that moment. And finally, I just said that he, his voice broke and he started crying because there was no way really to capture all of that in any kind of concise way. I could have written a, a, you know, a book just on how it felt at that moment with this man, I think 76 years old, uh, basically, you know, saying you know, he made this fatalistic statement, said, I, I didn't care then, I don't care now. And the way he said it, you knew he cared very much. Yeah. You know, he's talking about, you know, what, I didn't care what happened to me then, I don't care now. You know, it's kind of do what was right. And this is tone in his voice is like, no, it's not that you don't care. It's that you care entirely too much. And it's just this burden that you're carrying. And it just broke my heart, you know, and, and you know, I tried to try to capture that. And it's like, no, I think simplicity is best in this moment. Yeah. I, um, I'm, what I find so interesting about this project, like you said, the, the parallels between, because uh, I don't know if most people know that that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King gave his, basically gave his mountaintop speech right. the night before he was assassinated in Memphis there to attend um, the sanitation workers strike, uh, strike correct? Right. And so, and so um, Mrs. King ended up doing the walk with the sanitation workers because Dr. King was no longer with us. Right. And so for you all to revisit this project, like you said, when uh, Barack Obama was running for president, um, I just think is so, I, was that, you said, Leonard, I think you said that was on purpose, like you purposely chose yeah. that time? We wanted to look at, you know, again, originally it was a much larger canvas that we wanted to paint on, but we wanted to deal with this whole idea of what does it mean to be a black man in 2008. Yeah. Uh, 40, again, 40 years after these men you know, were denied manhood to such a degree if they had to paint on a sign, I am a man. And, you know, a few months before uh, Barack Obama would face uh, election day and was having, you know, all of these issues basically stemming from the fact that at some level, a lot of folks still didn't want to rec didn't want to um, accept him as uh, <laughs> as as a man or at least as, right. as, as, a, as an American man, let's say that. Right. Yeah. And we um, we didn't have the signs with us. So we had a the signs yeah. yeah we had we, we actually went to a printer and had those signs printed up i think uh, was that your bright idea carl or mine i don't know whose uh, but that, we, ours okay we're not, we're not yeah it's all out we're <laughs> lennon mccartney we're lennon mccartney yeah 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 uh, you and but, i uh, <laughs> we, we, we went to the um we went to the museum i think and we went to the union office and nobody had a copy of one of those signs right so wow. we finally went to a printer and had uh two or three of them made it didn't have that many made no, we didn't have that many. Yeah, did, did, did you somebody, keep one? some. Sorry. Did you keep one? I do not have one. No. Oh, oh I no. Thought, I was missing. No. One. I thought you maybe you took it. No. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Of course you didn't take it. <laughs> yeah. We actually, let, we actually let the models keep to keep their signs. I think. Oh, okay. oh good, because because the men didn't have them either. No, it's like nobody had those you know, those signs. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. that. Was gonna be my next question: Is do you have uh, a cop any no. of those signs? I think I think we gave it to no. the men. And the commercial Memphis commercial appeal was was amazing. They allowed yeah. to see their archives. I mean, they were so giving in, in terms of not only of their time, 
but in for us to be to bear witness to these historical images of yeah. of the of the of several of the of, of the strikers being being uh, I mean hosed dogs sick on sick on them I mean it was yeah. ridiculous. A yeah. friend of mine, uh, Wendy uh, Wendy Thomas Thompson uh, Thomas was a, a columnist for the for them at the time, and she was uh, instrumental also along with the union in helping us to try to find track down some of the men. Uh, cause, uh, you know, it's, it, 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 that was a whole thing in it, in itself, a whole adventure in itself, trying to find these guys. And the thing, you know, the thing about them is these are, you know, these are working men right. and these are work, you know, and these, these are not like, you know, you don't call a publicist to find Elmore Nickelberry, you know, <laughs> you call him. So these are not people who are used to dealing with media or being interviewed or any of the rest of stuff. They're working, they're, they're very humble working men. And so, you know, here we come on the 40th anniversary, just basically, you know, inundating them you know and it was i think there was a little bit of i don't know if you want to call it a culture clash or whatever but uh you know it's like we you know we're all black men but we came from different we came from different worlds although i will say that the world that that carl and i come from is possible in large part because of what they did in the world that, that you know that, that they came from absolutely you blame me for getting up early my man these, these <laughs> went to work at six o'clock five o'clock in the morning yeah, they were out there. Right, they were out there. I mean, yeah. what, Nickelberry was 76 at the Yeah, time? I think he was 76. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't yeah. get, right? I was 40 something years old back then. It was hard for me yeah. to get out. Yeah, and see the thing, the, the thing that kills me, one of them specifically said uh, he's working to pay off his house at 70 whatever years old because when he retires, he will have social security, which if you've been making a few dollars an hour, social security is not much and um, no pension. So basically it's social security and I forget what the other source of income was, but basically you work your life off and you have almost nothing. nothing. Yeah, and that, that, just, that just frustrated the heck out of me. I don't think people really appreciate, you know, what it was like to be a sanitation man uh, back in that era. And they talk a little bit about it. You know, we're used to, you take your trash can out to the curb and, and they come by in a truck and they pick it up and they put it. Back in Memphis, 1968, sanitation men go go into your backyard and there is no trash can there's a metal tub and you can throw anything into that tub that you want you know dead cats tree limbs whatever and they have to tote it out yeah. and after a while the rains come the metal tub rusts and it rusts through and you're carrying it and all that garbage is sluicing down all over you they used to call them uh you know walking buzzards and tub toters walking buzzards because of the because of the smell of it the stench of it and you're doing this for a dollar twenty-seven an hour, you know. And I, 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 when I talk about this, sometimes I tell kids now, you think this is 1968, Okay, you could you could probably buy a car for a dollar twenty-seven an hour. No, a <laughs> dollar twenty-seven an hour was not any was was still no money even in even in 1968. Uh, the, the story that breaks my heart, and well, a lot of stories that break my heart, but uh, one of the things that breaks my heart is that when these men died, uh, the city gave each family uh, a month's salary, which would have totaled about $300 and $500 as a bonus. Their burial expenses were $900, do the math. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, this is what we're talking about. This is what this is what they meant when they said, I am a man. Yeah. I'm talking about when, the, when the, the men died, I'm talking about the men who were killed in the truck that started it all. Right, right. And so it parallels a lot, you know, just the story in itself parallels a lot to what's happening today. Um, so it's interesting that, um, you know, to see this, 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 this image on Mocha Plaza right now, <laughs> you know, yeah. 2020 with what's happening today um, is really powerful because we realize that as black people, we are still fighting for our humanity. You know, we're still fighting to be recognized as yeah. human beings. You know, Black Lives Matter and I am a man are the same thing. Yeah. You know, we're, yeah. All, we're not we're not saying, you know, all we're saying is that we're human and, and, and treat us equally as other humans. And so that's what these men were fighting for. And here we are in 2020. We're still fighting for the same thing. So I, uh, I find it really um, tragically poetic. I guess is a way to put it. Um, 
But uh, to get on a little bit of a brighter side, I did want to talk about the the music in the um, in in the video in the short video. You know, I would love to see that as a long video. I mean, I would love to see that as more of a story. I think there's there's so much of a story there. It'd be interesting to see a doc a doc of, of these men. You know, um, but uh, how who who's who chose the music? Was that you, Leonard? Because I know that's your that's your thing. <laughs> no, I think that was Carl. That was you. Oh, yeah? yeah. That was McCartney, not Lennon. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think um, Storyboard had that music in the background. I just queued it up a little a little earlier at the end, but um, it was part of their of, of the uh, the video that I that I downloaded the Storyboard. But talking about uh, on the same note, you know, I I welcome the public to go out and 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 photograph some selfies next to the I Am Man piece and stand by Nickelberry, stand by those like Nickelberry, um, those gentlemen who gave their soul, gave their passion, and who deferred their dreams in, in order to take a stand and to and to, to declare their humanity. Um, so I am I I welcome people to go take that little take their iPhone or the camera, make a self-portrait. And, and you know, if, if you want to, you could tag the museum. I would encourage you to tag the museum, uh -huh. tag me, the Miami Herald, and kind of show how you want to stand next to this principle. This principle which still is important today. I would say even more so because we seem to relive our history over and over again with every passing you know, I mean, when I was watching the um, Gregory, uh, the, the, the Floyd video, it, it reminded me of a modern day lynching. Yeah, okay? it was a modern day and, lynching. And, and, and we, need to, we need to offer rebuttal to that by standing next, next to, this, to this, this giant and the scale is perfect. So yeah. I encourage everybody to go by Mocha, take a picture, yeah. put it on social media and let's support the spirit of, of the I Am Man project. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to go too far down the the, the rabbit hole here. But um, you mentioned modern day lynching. I, I do want to remind the audience that we do have modern day lynchings. That literally, uh, black men and women are being lynched, literally hung from trees um, as we speak. So um, I've I, I've um, noted about 50 lynchings since the late 80s to today that have actually been recorded. Um, so who knows how many lynchings have happened that, um, that we don't know about. So this concept of I am a man is, is, um, is, so, is still very prevalent. You know, it's, it's, this particular story is rooted in 1968, but it's still as re equally relevant in 2020. Um, so I, I also wanted to ask you about plans for for this project. Uh, is is there any? I know that the gentlemen have passed away that you've spoken to. Obviously, they were they were elderly at, at the time. I, th I think Nickelberry's still alive. I think oh, he's still that's alive. amazing. Yeah, he'd be eighty eight now. I think he's still alive. That's phenomenal. I I wonder. Have you thought about? Um, I don't know another another road trip or any other kind of project that you guys could do together in a, a similar vein. I would I would love to go. I mean, I love I, yeah I I love that again. It's you know that that word budget, but I would love to. Uh, cause <laughs> we, no, cause there, there, there's so many stories. There's so many stories to be told, and the people who live those stories are still with us, but won't be much longer. I mean, it right. has to be to be painfully obvious. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a lot of stories to be told. There's a lot of, of images to be captured, uh, but you know the, the the issue is especially these days the issue is the wherewithal. Yeah, it, what I love about this project is that you know you took the power of the of the, of the written word, and you took the power of the visual language, and you brought them in, into the in, into a singular space, and and it's almost like the right and the and the left hand, and we were like we're I mean, I think. We're, we're sticking and moving. I mean, we're throwing these amazing creative punches at, at, this, at this historical moment in America that we, yes, I think we are, we're the benefactors of their struggle, but the struggle yeah. continues. It continues. And, and this is our 
I mean, I, I'll speak for myself. This is my this is my swing at it. You know, this is my mm-hmm. attempt to confront this 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 uh, this original sin that this country refuses to recognize. Sure. Uh, called racism. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And I, I want to ask you, you know, this is my kind of my curator hat on. Who, who, Carl, did you decide the placement of the image? In terms of the, of the image on, at the museum or the Yeah, museum? at the museum. Oh, yeah. That's, that's all them. I mean. That's they, all them. Yeah. They came up to me and said, hey, we want to, then we want to use this image and, and, you know, we want to connect with the community and, and, and to put some sense of power and resilience at this moment of uncertainty. And I said, I'm down with it, you know, kind of call the Herald, you know, and, and if they're down, I'm down. And yeah. then um, the Herald, I mean, very kindly said, yes, we, we, we agree on getting this thing done. Then I said, hey, you know, I think Leonard Pitts would be a great person to bring in this conversation. I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna big you up, don't worry about it. Thank you, thank okay, you. We've had quite enough of that. <laughs> I, uh, quite I, enough of that. Um, but I felt that, you know, that he was the second part. He was the second part. If, 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 if the breath is what I took in, he was the exhale. So I thought it was very important for him to be there yeah. and have this conversation. Yeah, it's an important conversation to have right now, and I'm I'm just I'm so grateful to uh, to the to the team at at Mocha for inviting me to speak to both of you, and um, and I'm I'm the, the image is so be- I mean it's so striking, and it's just such per- it just looks so perfect where it is. I'm I love it. I can't stop looking at it. Yeah, it's, it's that image is poetry, and Carl gave me a print of that image, and it now occupies pride of place in my office right above my if I turn to my left it's right above my television wow. uh, in my in the center of the wall and you know it, it displaced a, a large portrait I had of the classic temptations and if you know me oh. you know that's high praise the, temp, <laughs> the, the temps went off the wall <laughs> for, for, for Carl's portrait of Elmore and Terrence Nickelberry because that's just that's just a piece of, of magic right there Piss, let me ask you a question. If you had a playlist, if you could make the I Am Man playlist. Yeah. Okay. Let's play, ask the public too. Let's ask the public too. What would be on your playlist, the I Am Man playlist? Oh, playlist. <laughs> yeah, playlist. <laughs> how are you going with that? <laughs> uh, I wish I knew how it would feel to be free, Nina Simone. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, that I think, and frankly, I know you want you want a bunch of songs, but you could play that ten times in a row and basically say everything you need to say. But if you want to add some more, maybe a little Marvin Gaye, "What's Going On." Okay, yeah, that's on my list. Go ahead. A little a change is gonna come. Oh, that's on my list. Go ahead. Yeah, okay, little Sam, little <laughs> Sam <laughs> Cook, you know. Okay. Oh, you gonna go uh, Sam Cook, not Al Green? Say what? You going Sam Cook, not Al Green? I'm going. I'm going to the root. Yeah, I want. I okay. want Sam. I want Sam with that. You can't you go know? way though. Yeah. Yeah, I got a, I've got a Curtis Mayfield from the audience. Okay. Yeah, you can do some Curtis. You can do some. Um, Mayfield. Donnie Hathaway. Someday we'll all be free. Donnie Hathaway. Huh? How about I'll take you there by the Staples Singers. Staples, I'll take you there, and a little. And you got to have some Ball of Confusion. Okay. Ball of confusion. Temptations. Okay. Right. I'm looking at, um, yeah, I've got something cued that we've got a couple questions. Uh, is the exhibit open right now? Uh, yes, the, exhi- the exhibition, it's actually on the plaza at MOCA. So you, so you all, anyone can go by and see it anytime you want. It's outside, you know, can, you can social distance, wear your masks, be safe, but it's outdoors. So anyone is welcome to go by MOCA Plaza and see the exhibition. Um, real quickly, let's see, is it possible to do the two week tour now? What's the two week tour? Hmm. The two week tour. Is that for you guys? Well, yeah. I'm not sure what that is. If somebody yeah. wants to pay for it, yeah. You know. <laughs> Someone <laughs> says, let's see, Thomas Rio said Pitts put together words and Pitts puts together words in ways that illustrate the complexity of ordinary life. Carl brings to life images that others ignore or take for granted. 
Both of you stand on the shoulders of men that toiled for their brethren to succeed. Thanks to you both for your powerful contributions. That's thank beautiful. you. Thomas, thank you. Thomas. Very beautiful. Thomas, thank you. Thomas, thank you. That is so nice. Yes, and Thomas did ask, the exhibition is open. Uh, what are plans for the installation after MOCA? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, that image, uh, I would like to, you know, I would like to to find the Martin Day Nickelberries and yeah. and and you know to not necessarily update because legacies passed on right sure and these gentlemen these brave gentlemen have passed on the sense of resilience and hope and 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 I would like to make uh, maybe some new images on on the contemporaries who are holding on to these dreams of these brave men. I mean, it's like, like Pitt says, I mean, it took a lot for someone to say, I am a man back then. It yeah. It not to even say it now. Yeah. 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 Okay, I've got some fire questions here. Hold on. Um, let's see. Laura Wood wants to know, what do, what do you think, what do you, okay, so what do you gentlemen think of the Black Lives Matter movement today? What do I think or what do, what do the both sanitation of you, mean? Both of you gentlemen. I think that the Black Lives Matter movement is just the latest iteration of, you know, all these movements that have been going on. We, we've been saying, you know, African-Americans have been saying the same thing in different ways and in different words for uh, how long has it been since the Civil War ended? 155 years, you know, and even before that, they've been saying the same thing in, in different ways, different words. Basically, I'm a human being, you know, treat me, treat me as such. And for some reason, that's always been a controversial thing. Yeah. Um, I. I'm, the thing that fascinates me about Black Lives Matter is, and I, how many years we've we been hearing this now, seven years, I believe it was, since, since the movement started, how that was, for so many people, was, and for some of them still is, such a controversial thing to say. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really? That's, it infuriates people, and I don't understand yeah. why. Because it requires them to deal with truths they'd rather not deal with. Yeah. So what we do instead is we play a linguistic game. We play, well, all lives matter, which right. is which is like is the, the the great shell game of all time. My my typical answer to that is: imagine that you broke your left uh, your, your your right wrist, and you went to the to the emergency room, and, and the doctor doctor, you know, my right wrist is in pain. Can you can you treat it? And instead of dealing with your right wrist, your doctor dealt with your left wrist and your knee and your rib cage and your, 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 your skull and, your, and, and, your, and your, your left ankle. You say, doctor, it's my right wrist, it's hurting. And he said, yeah, but all bones matter. Okay. <laughs> the, yeah. the, thing is, the thing is that if you acknowledge that there's a need to say that black lives matter, what you, what you say, what you're, what you're acknowledging and saying that is that we have for years as a nation treated black lives as if they did not matter. Right. Uh, the the two men who started who, whose death started the um, the, uh, the the strike, uh, uh, Robert Walker and Echo Cole. Again, you got to remember these men were chewed up in a trash compactor. Uh, the ram, the hydraulic ram, there was a short in it. The men had complained about this thing for 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 months. Nothing was ever done because again, they're black men. Who cares? And uh, and the, the the thing starts up and they're crushed to death. Like I mean, the, the imagery is, is is if you if you written this imagery in fiction, it would have been thrown away as too much on point. They're thro they're crushed to death like the garbage. Right. Okay. Right. I mean that 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 alone, you know, tells you something. These men were yeah. crushed like they're crushed with garbage. They're crushed like garbage. Yeah. Uh, so you know that you know so Black Lives Matter is an outgrowth of that. It's an outgrowth. Of, of King's movement, of, of Du Bois, of Marcus Garvey, of Frederick Douglass, you can take it all the way back. It's, it's, it's all the same, the, the same issue, the same, the same arguments. It's yeah. a contemporary exclamation. Um, uh, it's a, it's a temporary, it's a contemporary exclamation. Um, yeah. Statement. I mean, like, uh, I'm black and I'm proud during the during the seventies. Yeah. Respect. Respect. I mean, I mean, we're constantly you know, having to proclaim why should be self-evident. Yeah. Like, Can I... bro, you know, <laughs> there's no reason why I'm hoping my son will never have to say, well, Black Lives Matter, but he right. may have another statement he needs to make. Yeah. This is, the, this is a contemporary statement that needs to be heard. 
you, you reminded me of a, of a quote from Gil Scott Heron, I have become a special amendment for what included me all along. All men are created equal. Right, right. You know? Yeah, we had to have amendment just to be considered yeah. human. To be considered human, they had to add an amendment to yeah, exactly. the Constitution of the United States of America. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, I have a, so I have a question here. Um, can Carl talk more about how the project came to be, how the Herald was involved in the process of finding all the, particip the participants? Well, the, the project came to be, again, it's like I started thinking, you know, you know, my dad, who, who, um, who was very involved in, in civil rights for, for immigrants in Miami. Um, and I remember the pride he had in his face. And my mom was still alive back then in 2008. I remember the pride he had. I mean, he had tears when, when Obama decided to run for, for president. He could, just couldn't wrap his head around it. You know, it was almost like the Messiah had came <laughs> Had, you know, I came and landed in front of him. And I remember how moved he was and what that meant to him because he came to this country in 1956, not only as a black man, but as an immigrant in New York City. Yeah. Before going to New York, he went to Texas. Now imagine 1954, black man by himself in Texas. And the first job he got, because he was waiting to get to New York, was, a, was to be a waiter. And he, he went on his first day, he was serving a couple of people and, and the customer calls him the N word and he dropped and he said, I quit on the spot. He called his boy up in Brooklyn and said, yo, I, I need to leave. I need to come up. He said, "Look, we got we eight people. We eight people deep. We can't turn our back on a on a brother from 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 Haiti. Come up. We got you." Wow. You know, my dad told me your crown's been paid for. Wear it well. So this is this that project stemmed from that. I needed to know. I needed to know. Okay, what this meant for men that look like myself. Right. Okay. Hmm. I needed to know, and 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 I said, look, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a chat with with the pits. So we kind of brainstorm, and we're like, yeah, we, we went we went crazy, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we yeah, Well, we, we had the wish list. <laughs> Whoo, we went bonkers. We yeah. had the wish list, right? But you know, you know, dream big or go home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and we had a dream big. So yeah. how how did you how did you end up in Memphis? Like, was that the, that because you were. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, the, the goal was to travel through the South, right? Like you're going to travel yeah, well, we through the South, had, documenting black men's stories. We were going to go all over the country, actually, but Memphis was always the crux of it because right. the the hook was the 40th anniversary of right. the assassination of Dr. King. Right. So you know, and, and the sanitation worker strike. So that was all. If we went nowhere else. Yeah. Memphis was always was always going to be part of it. I think the other part of the question was how did we find the um, the, the, the sanitation workers. Yeah. And as I said, um, you know, my friend Wendy uh, Thomas at the Commercial Appeal, then at the Commercial Appeal, was an enormous help because, you know, she, she covers Memphis and she knows who to talk to there. Uh, the union that they formed, uh, you know, they were able to help us find them. And then I think we found some of them. We may have found some of them through the sanitation department itself. Uh, so, you know, it was just, you know, calling people uh, and, 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 and looking for contacts and leads. And then one person leads you to another. And Dennis Copeland who used to be the DOP, the director of photography at the Miami Herald was now working for in Memphis. Uh, and I called them up, I said, look, I, you know, I, I know I know this is hard to ask you, but is there a possibility we could get access to the archives? And, and, and credit to them and credit to him. They were like, yo, whatever you need, Carl, come up, you know, come, come through, sift to what you need, grab what, what you want and, and don't worry about it. And, yeah. Through. I mean, they came through, right? We had yeah. over a hundred images, right? They they extended the same courtesy to me. I was working on my on my novel, um, Grant Park, and I wanted to see images of the King assassination. And you know, I, looking through books, I've seen pretty much everything that that, that I I thought I'd seen everything that's out there. And they they let me look into their archives. I saw pictures I'd never seen. Some some rather gory, frankly. 
but they allowed me to see pictures that I that I've never seen. So yeah, you know, hats off again to the commercial appeal. Yeah. They really, you know, they were really generous with their with their uh, resources. And hats off to the Herald because they yeah. they, they they put in a lot of, you know, back then they put a lot of space in the newspaper. We're just you know developing a a, a presence on on the web, and they threw the most some of the talented people behind. Yeah. And hats off to them, and you know, you know they're a part of that dream too, making this come into to something that's tangible for our readers. And yeah. I think, for the most part, I I think that that's who I serve. You know, I serve our readers, and I yeah. think the Herald. You know, you know, we're in a in a very dire situation, but you know, we all are committed into making sure that we bring to our readers the best the best product as possible as you can see with the work of Leonard and myself we try to do that every day yeah yeah um, so I have a question here that's asking how long the exhibition will be up how long will the, will the image be up I have no idea it depends on what <laughs> you keep it up forever. Is it, is, it up, is it just I um is it just up for for quarantine like while we're quarantined while the museum is closed or will it be up I mean I think it's so beautiful I I would love to see it at least have the run of an exhibition you know Me too. Maybe I mean, months you know I was having I was having dinner um, at uh, at the restaurant near Mocha and to see these people walk by and just to watch it and from pedestrians to motorists to to cyclists to stop by and look at this, you know, I, I felt that I wanted to, I felt that these men were were honored, not because it's my work, it's because that work is in a different, it's, it's reaching out a new audience. Yeah. You understand? And I think that's what museums do really well. They, they make the past current. Yeah. 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 And I, um, I, I just got word that the ex that it's up all summer, so <laughs> there we go. So the I image, will be up, yeah, the image will be up all summer, twenty four seven. So we encourage the audience to go by and see it. If you haven't seen it yet, you can swing by any time and, and see it. Um, it's really stunning. And, and like Carl said, be sure to take your photographs and and, and tag the image and make sure you tag the museum, um, tag Carl, tag Leonard. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if we made real clear that the gentleman in, in, in that you can barely see hold, actually yeah. holding the sign. That's Terrence Nickelberry. That's the son of the gentleman in, in the foreground. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't think Terrence was was Terrence a sanitation worker. Yeah. Yes, he was. He was. Okay, he was. so it's two generations of sanitation workers: father and son. The father, the the, the father, of course, who was actually one of the uh, strikers, and then and then the son. So that to me makes it all the more poignant. Let's show them the photograph of the, the two in front of the uh, Lorraine Hotel. And yeah. Is, can you pull that up, Alex? Am I supposed to call you out like that? <laughs> <laughs> it's too late now. If you, if you want it, it's too late now. My We're bad. all family here. We're all family here. If you could pull up that picture because <laughs> there's an interesting story Alex behind it. That's awesome. Picture. He's on it. Yeah. He's on it. Uh, yeah. Next one over uh, is the one in front of the Lorraine. It might be the, let me see which number it is. Hold on. Let me see what number it is. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. There you go. Yeah, there you go. All right. Okay. Wow. So great story behind this. Okay. All right. So full disclosure, I didn't have permission to shoot at the Lorraine. <laughs> it was, this was guerrilla, this was guerrilla style, on site, get in and get out, you know, a portraiture. So I get to the Lorraine and I'm explaining to, to, to Mr. Nickelberry, hey, you know, we only got like five minutes and I don't really have a whole lot of time. I don't want nobody to come in and say, what your guys doing here? Though we were on public space, we're on the sidewalk, but I think that street is, is cordoned off. Now, yeah. You, I have lights. I have lights. Uh, and I had Leonard too. So, no, you didn't have me. Oh, you, you didn't come with that. That's right. You were not. I was gone. You froze me on. You yeah, you like, froze to death the day before, and I was on a plane when you took that picture. Right. So I'm by myself. Yes. Okay. All right. So I get, I get the sun, and I get, um, and Mr. Nickelberry, 
frame properly. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm shooting. And if you look to the right of the frame, you see that guy with the hat? We don't know who he is. I have no idea who that man is. He just showed up and left. It spooked the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay? I was like, I like, Mr. Lickberry, do you know that guy? Nope. And I asked the son, nope. I said, who is he? He came, and I'm, I'm not, I, will, I am not joking. He was there for more than maybe a, maybe three or five seconds. And that's it. You stood there? I don't know what he did. Mm. I don't remember him entering the frame. I don't remember him exiting the frame. Oh, okay. Is I'm, shooting, <laughs> I'm shooting this, and, and I'm watching him come in. I'm watching something come in. I, I think I shot that on, on my Hasselblad, on the Hasselblad. And I saw him come in and I went and cranked again and I backed it up on my digital camera. I, when I went to go shoot again on the Hasselblad, he was gone. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it, it, it tripped me out. And, and, and when I looked at the, at the negative and I saw him there, I said, no, nah, this is it. That's the picture. <laughs> I didn't even look at the rest of my other take. I said, this is it. So uh, whoever you are, if you're listening, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> trying to adjust my lighting. OK, I've got some more questions coming in. Let me see. Yeah. Got a lot of questions. Um, I did see one. I can't find it. But I think someone asked about, um, which I did ask the question about possibly expanding the exhibition, and also a question about potential documentary someone just asked that as well I'm trying to fix my lighting sorry i mean i'm game I'm, you know look i'm willing to put in the work i just got to call leonard pitts in the middle of the night again and <laughs> cooperate <laughs> I, I promise you give you one more another image uh -huh. <laughs> mr pitts please uh, yeah <laughs> write me some words to go with this <laughs> okay, i've got a good one um let's see how many shots did it take to get that photo? That photo that's at, hanging at Mo that's hanging at Mocha right now. A million and a half. <laughs> no, it did not take a million and a half. I went through. I went to. I went through maybe a roll and a half or two and a quarter, which is about fourteen frames. And I probably went through maybe 30, 30, 30 images on my digital. So. It probably took no more than about 15 to 15 minutes. Wow. To be honest, yeah. Because, you know, that's not including setting up the lights and, and, and doing all the technical thing. Once I started, it, it, it was self-explanatory, you know? I didn't, I didn't have to embellish anything. It was there. Yeah. If you look at, the, at, at, at Nickelberry's face, there's a sense of, sense of, of determination and pride Stubborn pride. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, gosh. it was it was just it was magical. Wow, and and what about the the Lorraine uh, motel photo? Oh, that took five minutes. <laughs> really? Yeah. I well, you to, see, you said he had to get in and out. Get in and out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and you, I don't want to use the word drive by, but if I was, <laughs> right. if I was still in my car, it, it would have been like that. Right. It was right. Quick. It was That's really quick. That's pretty phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't have the answer off the top of my head, but Umbretta just asked, where can we see the video and all of the photos? Is yes. that, where, where does that live online? Well, it lives on, it lives on the, if you Google Miami Herald, if you Google I Am Man, Miami Herald, or Leonard Pitts, or Carl Juice, make sure you have I Am Man, the Herald, or Carl, or Leonard, it will come up. It's, yeah. It, yeah, it will come up. It will come up. Um, the only drawback it is, built on a flash um, on a flash uh, platform mm -hmm. so some of the stuff will not be activated but the video our video will be is, is activated the pictures the uh, the archival pictures will be active will, will be, be able to able to be seen right here. the content the written content will be able to be seen um, and it's, it's a pretty cool experience and this is back in 2008 when newspapers yeah. were just getting into into uh, multimedia. Yeah. Um, I have a good question. Oh, someone just put up the link here. Thanks, George Fishman. Hey, George. 
Um, an anonymous attendee just asked, uh, did you visit the Al Green's Full Gospel Tabernacle Choir in Memphis? Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, we did. I think we have different takes on it. Yeah. Um, I'll music give you my. Huh? <laughs> you go first, music critic. It wasn't even a music <laughs> critic criticism. It was a church criticism. OK. You know, this is the second time I've been to, 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 to Reverend Green's church. Mm -hmm. And it's not really, it's not a church. It's like, I don't know what you call it, but it's like, yeah. I'm used to, you know, they sing and then, and, and, you know, read the announcements. And then the pastor says, okay, turn to such and such in the Bible and, you know, read the, uh, some verses of the Bible. And then here's my, you know, here's my sermon. Al never did that. It was a concert. That's what it, it wasn't was. even that because he didn't sing. I thought he, he did. Who's no, singing? he didn't sing, his choir sang. His choir sang, that's right. Al didn't sing. But the whole the whole presentation where there would have been a sermon, it was, I mean, it, it, it's a bunch of people, and you can tell, you know, that, that they're not from the neighborhood, shall we say, a bunch of tourists. And <laughs> it was. I'm serious. Most That's of the people true. in the audience were tourists, right. and it's Al going up. Where are you from? Oklahoma. We love Oklahoma City. Where are you from? <laughs> you know? The music was and good it, though. It's, it? No, man, it was driving me crazy. It was like that for half an hour, <laughs> and then. You know, I, I, I guess I got my feelings personally hurt because during the, uh, I guess it was the the offering period, he was sitting up in the pulpit and I just walked up and said, hey, Al, you know, you may not remember me, but I interviewed you a couple of times, da 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 And he gave me a look like, <laughs> <laughs> no autographs. <laughs> no <interview. laughs> so, you know, I've always said, you know, God bless Reverend Green, whatever for what he's doing. But to me, it's always been more of a of a tourist attraction than a church. And uh, I, I, you know, I'm, accurate. yeah. Okay. Say what? You're accurate on on the, on on the tourist attraction. Yeah. Music. I remember the music being pretty damn good. Oh, the music was good, but it was good. It, I felt like I was at a, at a concert first. The I didn't music was good, but okay, you have the option of this is really good music, but right. here's Al Green sitting here not singing. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have, okay. have been upset about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, I mean, hey, y'all are great. Y'all are really good. That's Al Green over there. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you let Al get a lick? <laughs> so, can I bring this up about our our debate? Well, I don't. I wouldn't call it debate. Would you call it debate? Oh. Yes, please bring it up. No, your Nina Simone argument. Yeah. Did yeah. you listen to it? Yeah, okay, well, backstory. Uh, Carl, and I don't remember this, but Carl says that when we left the church and we drove down to um, no, Mississippi no, on another story, yeah. we got into a debate over uh, the song Strange Fruit. Uh, and he, you know, he was asking me, you know, what I thought of the Billie Holiday version and he prefers the Nina Simone version. And here's the thing, Carl, uh, I don't think you've actually heard the, the, the Billie Holiday version I'm referring to because it's not streaming. I have it on vinyl. She actually recorded the song twice, twice, three times if you count a live version. She did it in 1939. This is probably more than anybody wants to know. 1944, <laughs> the 1944 version kills. I did listen to Nina Simone's version this afternoon. Carl forced me to listen to this, like, you know, literally almost hand, you know, twisting my arm behind my back. <laughs> Nina Simone's version is very nice. I, I would say she's on par with Billy in 1944. She's better than the other two versions. Okay. So are you talking about the live version or the, yeah, the live version there's a live version there's a, there's a studio version in 1939 but there's a version she did i think of 1944 in the studio that is just it, it, it when i listen to it it gives me chills okay so when i come up to see you next right <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll have to i have it only on i have it on vinyl i'll have to dig out the vinyl but no, i do I'll have it the crib. i'll come to your crib it's not like the okay. first job okay we'll <laughs> sit right. down okay and I'll, you'll force me to hear. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. No, no, I got no problem being wrong. It will give you. No, I'm not. Nina Simone was great. And I'm, I, you know, it, it's like one A and one B as far as I'm concerned. But the Billy, okay. the Billy version. Whenever I listen to it, it just gives the 1944 version always gives me chills. So that was. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, Beverly Markowitz wants to know what are the plans for the installation after Mocha. No idea. I have no idea. I'm hoping somebody will get inspired and they will say, hey, we want Carl and Pitts to do <laughs> this thing and to do an exhibit called I Am Man and mm -hmm. have us go throughout America photographing and telling these amazing narratives. 
and that oh gosh we, maybe we might need to talk about that uh, i'm just saying I'm just yeah saying. well we just passed the 50th anniversary yeah um, but, but we have a ton of time for the 60th that's right you know and i and i and i and i i, I do like the idea of a project just discussing what it means to be an african-american man alive you know in, in in this country uh you know during this era especially in the wake of uh you know george floyd and, and all the rest not that you know obviously african-american women haven't been having it uh, easy either you know uh, right. brianna taylor etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah yeah it's it's been it's been a very difficult year um yeah we have uh i mean obviously from the aside from a pandemic we're in the middle of a pandemic um we are you know we're struggling still um yeah 2020 has already been you know two years long yeah, yeah, it already has been. You know, you know what's interesting though is that there was an epidemic in 1968. There was a flu epidemic in 1968, mm. and um, because of all the civil unrest, it kind of gets overlooked, but it killed you know hundreds of thousands of people. I never realized that. It was. I mean, I I hate the name because I, I just think it's terrible. But it, it's it was referred to as the Hong Kong flu. Um, oh, I this, think I, no, I think I do remember 1968, that. 1968. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it killed a lot of people, but because there was so much going on, um, it didn't really get the kind of attention that like a SARS did, which SARS, I don't even think SARS killed as many people as this flu did. Yeah, and then you have the uh, one from uh, 1918, 1919. Right, the Spanish flu. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's interesting how these, these um, these things are happening at the same time once again. Yeah. Um, we are, let's see, well, we're doing well on time. And, uh, oh, wow. So I have some interesting things from some of our viewers. You guys are awesome. You're giving some good, good questions. Um, okay, yeah, we're gonna start wrapping up, but I just wanted to say that, um, oh, here we go. Strange Fruit was written by a Jewish man. Yes, it was. It was. Pam Weiss said, hi, Pam. Yeah. Thanks for he that. Wrote, he wrote it as a poem and and gave it to uh, to Billy Holiday. God, it's sick. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Um, let's see. So I see if there's any more questions, and then oh, we'll wrap up. Note, just hold on one second, though. On that yeah. note, on it was an image that I right. think his name was Abel. I don't remember his last name. That he saw. Yeah. Oh, he saw the he saw the lynching of uh, Abram Smith and Thomas Ship in 1930 i interviewed there was one man who survived that lynching a man named james cameron like the movie director i interviewed him for the herald back in 91. wow that's an that's an amazing story and i wish that, you could have been with me on and, that and for that to remain in your memory yeah to that point that you can you can put that memory into words yeah yeah if anybody wants to know what he's talking about i would advise you to google abram a-b-r-a-m smith thomas s-h-i-p-p -P, smith it's one of the um one of the most famous lynch photos of all time and what makes it horrific like a lot of the lynch photos is not the, the two dead men hanging in the tree but the faces of the crowd are just are just really amazingly uh they'll, they'll just give you goosebumps wow yeah uh, let's see pam says that there's a documentary about it i think you're breaking up a little there rewind are you still with us? Yeah, I think she's still with us. Lord. Well, let's see. Um, well, somebody asked me a question. I'm looking at the chat. Somebody asked me, did I place the obit for Stan Lee? <laughs> Which is way off point, but yes, I did. You did? <laughs> I wrote Stan Lee's obit a couple years ago for the Herald, yeah. So Leonard, so how did you go from being a music critic to a columnist? I did music for uh, 18 years and uh, it felt like a life, at the, at the end, it felt like a lifetime. At the beginning, it felt like I was stealing the money. You know, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna pay me and send me to Las Vegas to talk to Gladys Knight? Is this legal? You know, this is so cool, <laughs> you know. By 1993, 1994, you know, Gladys Knight is not the biggest name in music anymore. It's uh, Millie Vanilli and New Kids on the Block. 
and a, and a new guy who was calling himself Snoop Doggy Dog. People forget that. And I just wasn't feeling it anymore. I wasn't hearing it. I was uh, in my, uh, what, 40s, I guess, by then and had been, you know, listening to music professionally for almost 20 years and was just burned out. So I went to the Herald with this idea, hey, why don't you just pay me to write about anything I want? And, you know, I figured, I fully figured they were going to say, uh, no, thank you. Uh, get back, uh, you know, there's, there's a new kids concert coming up. You're back. And, you know, I figured they were going to say, you know, thank you, no, there's a new kids concert and you better be at it. But uh, to my, my great relief, they said, okay. And that's how I ended up doing what I'm doing now. You know, again, again, you know, God bless the Herald. Thank you know. I, I think there's a reason for both of us. It's been our professional home for uh, for so long. For me, man, half my life. You know, you're back. I'm back. My Wi-Fi went out. You know, I had. I I swear, I had. I dreamed last night. I was like, oh my God, what if the Wi-Fi goes out? <laughs> and I put it out. <laughs> and that's exactly what just happened. Dreamed it into occurrence. Glad we we had your back. <laughs> anyway um let's see so i guess uh we should wrap up and um wait i want to see if we have one more question because we have a few minutes right yeah. how are we doing um alex or adriana can i can i take another question or should i should we wrap up yes you can take another question okay hey. all right let's see oh this is really beautiful pam has been lovely um, she says, thank you for your writing, Leonard Pitts Jr. Your words are powerful and read with ease. I hope the Miami Herald is able to survive. That makes, I was going to say two of us, that makes a bunch of us, you know. <laughs> uh, again, there's a reason that Mother Herald has been uh, our professional home for a long time. And, uh, you know, we're all just sort of, I can't imagine Miami or newspapers or me without the Herald. <laughs> We'll see. We're we are in such insane times. Yeah, we, we are. Yeah. 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 We love the Herald. We need music. Yeah. We need. So there's a lot of praise for for you too. Let me just let me just heap a little bit of this praise on for you. Um, Amanda says thank you for all of your work and your words. Um, oh, Matthew. <laughs> hey, Matthew. I wouldn't mind another hour of this. Uh, Sarah Prieto, Prieto says I have truly enjoyed all of Mr. Pitt's novels. Thank you. Um, Lisette, Lisette Me uh, Mendez, that your colleague, she says, two of my favorite yeah. people. I love all the memories and funny, poignant stories you both ha you both share. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. This has been incredible. Okay, I want to say our thank I want to make sure that I don't forget anyone. Our thank yous. Wait, I'm stepping away for a second. No problem that I have all of our thank yous. Um, first of all, I want to thank um, you two. This has been great. I wish we had more time because there's so many, so many more stories I'd like to pull out of you. And I'd love to, I'd love to talk about music some more with you as well. <laughs> um, but I want to thank Mocha for inviting me and the incredible team there. Um, Shauna, hi Shauna, hi, and Shana. Kevin, hi, uh, Alex, Adriana, Matthew, thank you all. Hey, Kim Green, Kimberly Green. <laughs> and uh, oh, Councilwoman Keys, thank you for attending. Um, we want to thank, obviously, the Miami Herald Media Company. Thank you so much, Elizabeth Shannon. And we want to thank the City of North Miami, um, Mayor, Mayor Bennett Bienomi, and uh, uh, the North Miami Council, City of North Miami Council. We want to thank you. And we want to thank all of you that have tuned in who've asked questions, who've made comments. You all have been so gracious and so kind. Thank you so much for joining us. Anyone else? Uh, Carl, Leonard, any last words? Well, I like uh, to, go ahead. Go, Carl. I, I like to thank our readers. Um, yeah. Um, we do it for them. And we have had the honor of being paid to do what we love. And, and, but I like to thank my colleagues that, you know, when I go and do these projects, they pick up the slack. You know, if I'm, if I'm gone for two weeks, two months, six months, you know, I have an amazing extended family um, at the Herald. Some of them, a lot of them have left, but there's a core of them that's still there. And I want to personally thank them and our editors and, and make things, and make the impossible possible. Yeah. So I'm very grateful to that. 
Well, I, I would just co-sign everything that, that, that Carl said. Again, without the Herald, uh, not only is there not a I am a man project, there's not a me, you know, uh, uh, you know, so uh, I, I am I am eternally grateful, not just to the, to the folks that I work with now, but to the folks who brought me in and and who didn't fire me when I said, don't send me to another Millie Vanilli concert, please. please. <laughs> <laughs> You went to a Millie Vanilli concert? <laughs> Actually, it was New Kids. I'm embellishing. It was it was uh, it was uh, New Kids, and oh God, I forget what what all else. But it's like I just couldn't deal anymore, you know. And uh, you know, I just I just begged, you know, I, I can't do this anymore. And I'd been hired like I think three years before to do to do music. So this was kind of a I had a lot of gall, you know. To say, you know, the job you hired me to do a few years ago, I don't want to do it anymore. You know, I've had enough. <laughs> I've had, a, you know, so I'm really grateful to them for that, and to, uh, and again, to, uh, you know, the, the folks who 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 read and who give us uh, feedback, uh, good, bad, or or indifferent, um, no, not indifferent, you know, but the, but the folks who give us feedback, you know, that's that's what I, that's what you live for. The, the worst thing in the world, people think the worst thing in the world is to put something out, and and people hate it. The worst thing in the world is to put something out and people are indifferent to it. And they don't care. It's just like, yeah. mm, you know. And the, the one thing that I can say is that re, my, most of my readers have not been that, you know. So I, I, I'm thankful to them for that. And thanks to the subjects, it's a wonderful subject. It's not yeah. one of the brave men who, um, who retold their stories to, to two strangers. Yeah. And you and, could tell it was painful. Yeah. And, and you know, I remember uh, Mr. Nickelberry's son calling me and requested if, if it was a possibility that I could, I could send us a print for his father's birthday. I said, yes, because it's very done. Um, um, these are our heroes, you know? Yeah. And to see hi history in, in, in breath, to see history in, in, in space, and to see history in, in its contemporary form, I think it's amazing. And, and hats off to the museum to, to, be, to being a living entity. Not yeah. something that just you know puts stuff on the past, but makes the past present. And thank you, Mocha, and I really do appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you, thank you, thank you to North Miami City Manager Teresa Theralis. I just got a little note there. Thank you so much. Um, and it looks like you'll be able to view this again for those of you who may want to share with your friends, or if you just want to check this out again to hear some of these great stories. It's going to be on YouTube, so this will live on. In, in the world on YouTube, so you'll be able to view it there. And again, uh, we want to thank you all for joining us. I hope that we will we'll do this again. I, I'd love to do this again. And, uh, I'm and, there. Um, and I do have a, a note from someone that says that, Carl, you should sell prints of these because people would love this image. And so maybe that's something to think about as well. Out of, out of, out of your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Postcard prints, Sam said. Mm -hmm. Postcard prints. So there you go. Prints and postcard prints. Okay, so I guess we're signing off. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. And Thank please, you, guys. You. 24 7, all summer long. I am a man. Carl Juice. Thank you, Carl Juice. Yeah. Thank you, Leonard Pitts Jr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, all. Good night, y'all. Bye, guys. Thank you.